So having a, having a goal, having something to move forward to towards, that's, a, that's very important because that's the direction. So, but you have to have a plan because they say a goal without a plan is just a wish. So you want to have something that you're moving towards and you need to have action steps that you're taking to get where you want to go, your plan. So what happens with most people is again, they're paralyzed by the fact that it's going to take too long to do this or it's going to be too hard to get in shape. And so it's the mindset. It's, that's why I said the mindset is always the most important thing. So for, for people, as we get older, we can still get stronger. We can still get more flexible. We can have better cardiovascular conditioning. We can get, if we have, if we don't like the way we feel or the way we look or whatever the case may be, we can always improve on that. The only question is, are you much like I was when I was, uh, you know, procrastinating with college? And are you saying it's going to take too long? It's going to be, it's going to be too hard. If you make it so here, then you make it so here. And that's, that's the thing that happens. So you have to have a goal. You have to have a direction. Okay. I want to get this. You have to have a time frame. much like I said, it's a six year plan for me to get to my graduate degree. And I acted upon those things and I got it, but I had to act upon those things. Did I always want to do the things I needed to do to get there? Did I always do them hundred percent? No. But did I do the things about 80%? Yeah, it's, it's not always a straight line. People exactly. think it's going to be a straight line. There's exactly. a lot of interruptions. In but the... was I about 80%? Yes. So I, it wasn't perfect. I wasn't always the best. I wasn't always the most happiest going to college and being in a room with other with 20-year-old people and stuff like that, you know, when I'm already an adult and already have my own business. But uh, I met a lot of cool people. I've, had, I've made a lot of good uh, connections and, and I've made a lot of distinctions from being around these people that were, you know, half my age sometimes. And it helped me uh, grow uh, and further my own career and just, and just uh, further helping me improve uh, personally too. So I think that the biggest thing is the mindset and understanding that it's never too late to start as long as you have a goal, a direction, and as long as you have a plan, action steps that you're taking to get where you want to go. But you have to not wait because there's always a holiday, right? There's always a holiday. There's always something. There's a there's a, there's a a party. There's always, hey, I'll wait till next year. There's always January 1st of 2019. But your time is the time for you to do it is now and that's the biggest thing if you want to if you don't if you want to stay young because we have to as we get older our muscle mass doesn't go up it goes down as we get older our bone density doesn't go up it goes down as we get older our fat mass doesn't go down it goes up right so all the stuff we want goes down all the stuff we don't want goes up right so you know what we want to do when we talk about you know have being vibrant is we want to make sure that we create actionable steps and one of the simplest things that you can do is start being is start moving start moving first off it's the mindset okay i'm willing to do certain things i don't need to i don't need to do crazy stuff but i wanted to start moving first so if you're not moving start moving start if you're exercising that's fine exercise what i find and and, and frank can attest to this is that most people when they do exercise even if they are exercising most people train for comfort most people train for comfort. That means they're not doing what they really can do to maximize their genetic potential. Even, and that's why we can always get better. Even I can get better at 50, getting ready to turn 52, and you can get better at 46. Why? Because there's still things we can do to get better. There's still things we can do to get stronger, more flexible, better cardiovascular conditioning. The only question is, are we mentally going to be strong enough to do those things that are going to be super uncomfortable to get to that point? One of the things that's always very interesting to me, we go to a gym like Lifetime here in Las Vegas, great gym, modern gym, and it's huge, and the parking lot is huge, and I always think everybody, a good parking spot is up in front, right? Everybody wants to be up front, but I'm thinking, when you're at a gym, really a good parking spot should be far away, like yeah. the furthest yeah. parking lot and that's should be the best, that's because like you said, even with movement, any extra mo movement, just like in Europe, where you can jump on those trains, and you can do whatever, it's like encouraging, like, no, I'll... Frank Yeager in fighting, the, UF, the former UFC champ, take the stairs. The guy never takes the elevator. He's always taking the stairs. Or you go to the gym. Why would you want to be as close, park the, the furthest point away and go? The other thing I was thinking of as you were talking is just as you get older, the, the, the thing is we develop a lot of bad habits. It's the same. Clark and I both have backgrounds in the fight game and in the martial arts. And one thing you see with, you know, when someone's been doing it for, someone's been training, a fighter's been training for 10 years or 15 years, they develop a lot of bad habits, and it can be very hard to fix those habits. If you get a fighter day one, like you've got some kids you work with, I've got some kids, you get them day one from scratch, you can prevent a lot of those bad habits. It's easier because you don't have to go in. And so a lot of times when you work, whether you're working in the fitness industry, whether you're working, you know, coaching kids jujitsu or kids boxing, uh, a lot of times with some of the older people, it's just breaking bad habits, which yes. can be hard. And so people have taken years to accumulate 
their bad habits. And now it is, it is harder to break them. That's one of the things, whether, you know, if, if, if you're 40 and you haven't been a millionaire by now, a lot of times that's because of either lack of focus or bad habits, right? And so the habits, a lot of times need to change dramatically. And that is a mental thing because we have to dramatically shift the mindset from, you know, what it was, which was bad habits, bad habits, bad habits. And, you know, maybe people partying, whatever people do to, Hey, you got to be up at 4:35 a.m. You get up pretty early. But uh, I, I go to bed late, so I usually get up okay. a little bit later. I usually go to bed at 12 or one, so I get up at seven or eight. Wow. I at least okay. need, need to at least get seven hours of sleep, and I feel good. So those, those bad habits, though, the, the thing is, sleep it's, is big. Yeah, about feeling good. <laughs> sleep yeah. is good about. I'm about a fan of that too. Because <laughs> I think even for aging, there's a reason that those supermodels. There's a reason that supermodels are sleeping eight, nine, ten, eleven, and even the Olympic athletes twelve hours. There's a reason for that. But we were talking about a guy. Uh, a guy named Yoel Romero, Romero, who's in the UFC, who I think is 40 years old. Yes. He is a brick. I mean, this guy is a force, and he's from Cuba. He wrestled. He is an Olympic. I think he, I think he was an silver Olympic, medalist. Little Olympic silver medalist, and he is a freight train. And his genes still work. He still you know, looks bionic. He, he leaps like a, you know, he moves like a lion. And we're seeing this, the, the, this guy, and I, and I always think he's only been fighting, you said, nine years. Yes. And I'm like, if Yoel Romero, Yoel Romero wasn't, Fighting, you know, doing jujitsu or, or UFC or mixed martial arts at 15. This guy came on late. He didn't start like MMA fighting till the cage fighting till he was 31. And I'll be honest, of all, Tom Brady blows me away at 40. The things he's doing. We've seen, you know, George Foreman at 46 winning a world title. We've seen Bernard Hopkins be he was age defying forever and ever. They weren't athletic like yeah. this guy. Nolan Ryan, <laughs> but this guy, Yo Romero, I haven't seen a fast twitch. I've seen guy. I've seen athletes, Bernard Hopkins. What wily, very mentally strong, able to make the fights ugly and and use their cerebral. But I mean, Yo Romero, cerebral fighter doesn't get his due. But Yo Romero, in addition, his athleticism at forty is mind blowing. And so, what do you see when you see a Yo Romero? Uh, what do you see? Because you you love you know you love him. We just saw he had a big fight last week, and I know you didn't weren't fond of him kissing his opponent. Yeah, his, his fight, opponent yeah, had been knocked out, and he was kissing the guy that. right afterwards. <laughs> but this guy is forty. Again, he is Cuban, so we can't always be sure. He might actually be, Yo Romero might, might actually be, older be for all we 48. <laughs> he He's Cuban. Oh, no offense, I, can't, I love you, Cuba, you know, but, you know, we, he, might, he might even be older. But, but he, 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 he is, you gotta agree, he's a mind blowingly phenomenal athlete at 40. Yes, uh, Yo Romero is a, is, a, is a phenomenal athlete. I think for him, again, it's part, it comes back to what we talked about before. You can have good genetics. You can be gifted with good genetics, but it's how, what you do with the genetics you have, uh, with the potential you have, because we all have, we all can get higher. Most of us, again, we, we relegate ourselves to this, because this is a comfort zone. As I said, most people train for comfort. Most people, their life is for comfort. They're not going to do things that are uncomfortable. The people that were telling me about not going to college, they were comfortable. Not that they weren't successful, but they were comfortable with their level. And me going to college, that gets them, maybe it casts a, uh, it casts a, uh, puts a mirror up to them and say, Says, why are you still staying here? Why aren't you? What trying did to do that something? do for you psychologically, though? It made getting a college degree did what for you? Um, it, 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 it helped me too, coming from a again. I was already thirty five, so and then by the time I got my degree, I was already you know that's that's uh, then I'm now I'm six years later. I'm forty one, so um, for me it was more of just it was a sense of accomplishment for me. I felt that I I, I knew a lot more. I knew the science. I mean, before I, I was still reading things and I thought I understood the science, but now I knew the science. I had the opportunity to actually do cadaver dissection with a with a person that gifted their body to science for us. So not using a pig or something like that, actually being able to see a human body and to do dissection on that was was uh, just, just a great, a wonderful experience. So I appreciate that person um, gifting their body to, uh, to the university. <laughs> but, like the dead person, the cadaver. Yes, yes, yes. So... Um, so when, when, so to me, it was more just self-fulfilling for me. I wasn't like, oh, now I'm this. No, I just felt it was a great for me. And it was, it's good to have those. It's always good to have a couple letters after your name. It gives you maybe, maybe gives you a little bit more credibility because you, again, you might not know anything, but to me, I mean, I knew I knew stuff and I know stuff and it just gave me a little bit more credibility with my, with my work and my profession. We're running down the end here. Last 20 seconds. What do you say when the voice of "Hey, it's too late, it passed me by"? What do you say to yourself when you when you're 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 hunting things down now? Well, very simple. All we know is, as I said before, earlier, is what is in front of us. 
how much what how much this time has passed us by I meant to say we don't know how what's in front of us so we need to make sure that the years that we don't know are in front of us those finite amount of years that we make the most of it so I believe my best years are in front of me back to your point when you're talking about your professor I believe my best years are in front of me and so I'm making the most of what I have and I don't know how many years they are so I'm gonna make the most of what I have left